I recently heard Sam Altman from OpenAI say that artificial intelligence is soon going to solve all of physics. Yeah, I don't think so. Actually, things haven't been going all that well recently with AI, and I have a brief summary for you. The, the main thing that I feel is important about this technology is that we are on an exponential curve and a relatively steep one. That was Sam Altman last year. In an essay from September titled The Intelligence Age, he wrote confidently that AI is going to get better with scale and it's possible that we'll have superintelligence in a few thousand days. It may take longer, but I'm confident we'll get there. A few weeks ago, he concluded that soon enough, physicists will all be superfluous. Eventually, we'll solve every problem in physics. He's not the only one of the tech bros who's after physicists. Remember this guy, Mark Andreessen, who a few months ago wrote the techno-optimist manifesto, according to which, quote, the water is warm, end quote? He has thoughts about physics, too. And, you know, if you keep feeding these things enough data and enough processing cycles, they'll eventually evolve an entire internal world model, right? And they'll have like a complete understanding of physics. This faith in the increase of AI capabilities widespread. Here we have Dario Almode, CEO of Anthropic. From a, from a fundamental perspective, I personally, I think it's very unlikely that the scaling laws will just stop. And then we have, of course, Leopold Aschenbrenner, who thinks that AI will reach superhuman intelligence by 2027 or so. Reality is different. A week ago, some OpenAI employees leaked insider information to an outlet called The Information. OpenAI is currently training a new model called Orion, and while that's still in the training, according to The Information, some researchers at the company believe Orion isn't reliably better than its predecessor in handling certain tasks. Orion performs better at language tasks, but may not outperform previous models at tasks such as coding. Reuters reported that OpenAI isn't the only one running into this problem. Ilya Sutskeva told Reuters recently that results from scaling up pre-training, the phase of training an AI model that uses a vast amount of unlabeled data to understand language patterns and structures, have plateaued. Bloomberg reports that Google is facing the same issue. An upcoming iteration of its Gemini software is not living up to internal expectations, according to three people with knowledge of the matter. And on X Twitter, further rumors are making rounds. Heard a leak from one of the Frontier Labs. They reached an unexpected huge wall of diminishing returns. Sam Altman insists there is no wall. The reason for Altman's optimism is likely that there are several optimizations left to be done on the current large language models, which is what Aschenbrenner calls unhobbling. For example, just having these models iterate answers and thinking about them as the newest GPT does has been a huge improvement. Then again, if they don't scale with more data, this will only delay the problem. The only person who seems to be genuinely happy about this is Gary Marcus, who has predicted that this will come years ago. John Lecoeur from Meta and Bill Gates have also speculated about this. I can't say I'm happy, but I'm unsurprised. I'm also genuinely puzzled why these AI people think this will work. Part of the reason is quite plausibly that they need investors to believe it, but I've come to think it's partly because they don't understand physics. Listen to this interview with Ilya Satskeva, that's one of the guys who left OpenAI last year and then founded his own AI company. Predicting the next token well means that you understand the underlying reality that led to the creation of that token. It's not statistics, like it is statistics, but what is statistics? In order to, un to understand those statistics, to compress them, you need to understand what is it about the world that creates this, those statistics. I find this very interesting because it's easy to see what's going wrong there. He seems to think that you can deduce the loss of an underlying reality from a higher emergent level. In the case of AI, you want to reproduce a physical model of the world, that's the underlying reality, from an emergent level, that's words and maybe videos, but in any case data that humans have produced. 
But we know that this generally doesn't work. You can in general not deduce the laws underlying an emergent level. Think about this for a moment. If this was so, why didn't Aristotle just deduce the standard model of particle physics sitting in a comfy chair staring at his hands? Why did we have to go and build huge particle colliders to get it done? It's because deduction only gets you so far. Then you'll need better data. In physics, it's called the decoupling of scales. I'd expect there to be a similar decoupling of scales between the details of our reality and our description of reality. Even if you take videos or images, these are extremely limited representations of the real world. To break this impasse, you need real-world data to train AI. And there isn't remotely enough. I've now had quite a few AI people telling me that data is not a problem. So they think I'm wrong and I think they're wrong and I guess we'll see how it goes. But to me, training large language models with more data seems like going to the gym. At some point, adding more weights doesn't make you stronger. It just makes you more likely to drop something heavy on your foot. Artificial intelligence is really everywhere these days. If you want to learn more about how neural networks and large language models work, I recommend you check out the courses on Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Some even have executable Python scripts or videos with little demonstration experiments. Whether you want to know more about large language models or quantum computing, want to learn coding in Python or know how computer memory works, Brilliant has you covered. And they're adding new courses each month. And of course, I have a special offer for users of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.